Welcome to Grade A. Fun now. Yo, it's been a minute since I've uh, recorded something, but check this out. I know a lot of times people will be wondering, like, how do I go from my silhouette to then working out the details? Just do it. <laughs> Well, the reality is the best way to work though is if you just think about shapes and contrast and shapes because what it'll do is it'll help make it easier for you then to do iterations or variations so I just started out with this overall shape silhouette design, uh, design. Blah. and you can see that there's some shortcuts of course like I flipped the leg because why draw it twice you know what I mean and I use the brush uh, primarily because I just want to quickly work out some details and you may be wondering why I draw it in red it's just because when I go back and draw it with a different color that I can see where I've drawn things and where I haven't drawn things for the cleanup part of this I decided I would go with the pencil and the only reason is because I was thinking to myself, what if I want to tweak the lines? And it's much easier to tweak lines with a pencil than it is with the brush tool. And that was the only reason. Uh, otherwise, in terms of the tools, they're actually fairly similar. So there's not that much difference in the response and the feel, at least from me using it. Um, if you have a different experience, feel free to let me know in the comments. But, um, the greatest part about working with the vectors, uh, at least harmony, is that you can copy and flip things if your character is relatively symmetrical and it'll save you time on the cleanup polish phase. At this point, it's the, it's the palette making, which can take a lot of time to be honest. Filling things in color wise is really fast because you can just convert all your lines uh, into strokes and then you could just use the bucket fill and you just go through and fill stuff as long as it's enclosed uh, even if it's not enclosed you can draw a line to close stuff where you want to um, or you can use this the uh, stroke tool to close the strokes uh, there's a lot of different ways of approaching it um, but the, the great part for me is that I do like the flexibility of being able to make a specific swatch that's associated with a certain area of color and if I want to change the color like I can do it really really quick all I have to do is just click on the swatch and it just change the color it'll change the color uh, universally for everything um, so and if you've seen previous videos then you already know a lot of this stuff if this is your first time you should probably go watch other videos where I really talk about some of the process and the reasoning and thinking behind it, etc., etc. Um, but the ultimate goal is to be able to make it to where you got really clean vector artwork. So if you want to scale it up, scale it down, then you you never lose resolution, which is pretty awesome, fantastic. So I've established all the base colors. It's all in the palette. And if I ever decide to do something with this again, like I can reuse that palette over and over again, and I don't have to create that palette ever again, which is fantastic. So I put this character on a, on a neutral background so that I can see the colors a lot clearer. And then I change the color of the line work to a greenish color, uh, so it had a bit of warmth to it. So what I'm doing now is because I already know that I'm going to use the tone shader I can pretty much color the shadows like any color it doesn't even really matter um, because if you actually want to change the color of the shadow you can go on a tone shader and change the, the color um, so I use bright green again just so that I can specifically see where these shadows are and that I won't miss something that I very specifically wanted to hit. Uh, part of what's awesome though about the tone shader as well as the highlight shader 
is that you don't have to stay inside the lines. So if you want to work really, really fast and just like blast out of the, the shadowy side and not feel like, oh man, I got to perfectly contain this inside the line work, you don't. You can scribble outside, just but just on the side where the shadow is, not on the, the light side. Because on the light side, you need it to retain its shape. But on the shadow side, you can make it sloppy outside the line work as much as you want. Because what it's going to do is going to cut off the excess that uh, stops at where the art worker is. Artwork is. So it's quick and fast. Sometimes I use blending modes, but in this case, I was like, because I got a background and I didn't feel like making additional notes. Uh, I just decided I would use the, the tone shader and then connect it all up and then you can see how it clips it out and it's like clean oh my goodness and it's so fast and then you do the same thing for the for the light right so you just make the highlight shader and then you just you could pick any color again I just picked yellow because it, it was bright easy to see but that's not actually the color of the of the light. The light of color is just, a, it's like a whitish color. Um, if I wanted to though, I could go back in and tweak and change the color. And if that's something you might be interested in, like again, hit me in the comments. I'll rock it for you. Kind of give you some insight on how to manipulate, modify your uh, highlight tone shaders. If you want to know, holla at your boy. And then I just made a layer because I want to put some bright highlights in because bright highlights are, are pretty. So that's it. You know, check out the other videos, subscribe to other stuff. If you ever need an artist, I got you. Grade.